Now, for those of you that follow me consistently, pay attention to what I tweet, watch the videos that I do, you would know that I'm a pretty big backer and defender and fan of Dan Campbell, the Detroit Lions head coach, and have been a fan since he was hired. And it's kind of a courageous stance to take, especially when you look at his introductory press conference. But sometimes you look at certain guys and you, and you just get that vibe. And sometimes that could be in a negative way. You could say, oh, that dude's a fucking idiot. Like I look at the Broncos and Nathaniel Heck and, and he always got the vibe like, oh, he's, he's, he's not going to make it. Like he's, he's, he's an idiot. Uh, but then you see Dan Campbell and even if you say sometimes he might be an idiot, you're like, yeah, but he's the type of idiot that you would walk through walls for. I think the way he speaks to men resonates very well within the locker room. And while certainly at times not the greatest in-game manager, not the greatest decision maker, he is a leader of men. And that shit absolutely matters. And the way you know these things are true is you look at the way this 2022 season kind of panned out for the Detroit Lions. Because ultimately... This was a team that started one in six. One in six. Just think about that for a second. One in six. Like so bad to where you're wondering whether Dan Campbell's going to start being on the hot seat. Whether Dan Campbell should be shown the door or not. Like not going well. But then it's amazing what happened after that one in six start. This team started to put together and figure it out. And they went eight and two the rest of the way. Eight and two. The Detroit Lions go from one and six to a winning record, nine and eight. For them to start the way they did and end up finishing where they did was truly impressive. And I'll tell you flat out, absolutely no shame in my game at all whatsoever. I absolutely wish the Detroit Lions would have made the playoffs instead of somebody like the Seattle Seahawks because the Lions could have actually done some damage in the playoffs and beaten somebody. I don't know that any of those teams in the NFC would have wanted to see Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions come January in the playoffs. Ain't no fucking way. That team had all types of momentum. Like Even when you look at that last game of the season, that Sunday night game against Green Bay, Green Bay's got something to play for. The Lions have nothing to play for can just phone it in. And instead, what do they do? They go into Lambeau and they beat Green Bay. If that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. But the future's starting to look a little bright for the Detroit Lions. They also went 5-1 and one in the division, beating, I mentioned that, beating Green Bay in the last week of the season. Like 5-1. and one. You want to look at a way that you can make it a lot easier for yourself to get in the playoffs. You win your division. That's always a great way to try and do it. And when you go 5-1 in your division, you do that, you know, more often than not, you can win your division. It wasn't the case this year because obviously Minnesota just won too many games. But, you know, by the time you got to the end of the season, if you ask me who the best team in the NFC North was, records be damned, it's the Detroit Lions, not the Minnesota Vikings. And I don't even know if it's close. And when you look at this team, the Lions... They did a lot of this because of their offense. Jared Goff, of all people, threw for over 4,400 yards. Jamal Williams went over 100 yards rush, or 1,000 yards rushing. Amon Ross St. Brown went over 1,100 yards receiving. And this was a team that even inexplicably traded away TJ Hawkins into a divisional rival. Like, why would you do that? They got all of this out of their offense, but traded away a former top 10 pick tight end to a divisional rival. Jamison Williams barely played this year, didn't see a lot of action coming off of the ACL, and this was an offense that was still fifth in points scored and fourth in total yards. That was a big-time shit right there, and this defense was still pretty bad. They still sucked, but even then you got some signs of hope, like Akuda played most of the season, whether that's good or not, but Aiden Hutchinson was the second overall pick. He finished with nine and a half sacks, and look, I don't think he got nine and a half sacks being a dynamic edge rusher. Some of those are due to hustle. Some of those are due to the situation, the circumstance, stumbled into a couple. You know, he's a solid player. Uh, let's not get too blown away. But Houston, as a six-round pick rookie, had eight sacks himself. You're talking about building a foundation and building that foundation in the trenches. You look at them offensively with Decker and Sewell at the tackle positions. You've got a really good foundation in that offensive line, hence why you see what the offense was able to do. 
Now you look at this team defensively with Hutchinson and Houston, you're starting to build a really good foundation on that defensive line. Hey, shit, that's how championship teams are made, right? Is be great in the trenches on both sides of the ball, and the Lions are getting closer as we go on. And I can certainly understand when you look at the numbers and you see where the Lions were offensively from a statistical standpoint, and you look at where they were defensively from a statistical standpoint, and you look at some of the investment that they've made, and you say, man, Jared Goff threw for over 4,400 yards last year. They had a 1,000-yard rusher. They've got Amon Ra St. Brown, and now you're going to have Jameson Williams with another year of recovery off of the ACL injury. Well, that offense with that great offensive line is probably going to be pretty set. This is a team that needs to really invest in the defense and especially in their defensive front seven. I don't disagree. This is a team that needs to invest in that defensive front, especially the interior of the defensive line, and they need to invest in that linebacking core. Yeah, that front seven absolutely is a focus area. So it's easy to say that they need to address that defense because they absolutely do, because they do. But the real challenge is, is whether they possess the courage to do the right thing. And that is leverage their position in this draft where they've got two first round picks, including what, what's their first one, like sixth overall, is it? From the Rams with the Stafford deal. They have the ammunition and the firepower to go make a move, to go get a young quarterback. And you could sit there and fool yourself into thinking that Goff had a great year, 4,400 yards passing and blah, 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 and all of that. But he's still limited. He's still Jared Goff. The Rams wanted to move off of him for a reason. Sure, you got a great season out of him in 2022, but to expect that to continue and expect that to be the guy that's going to lead you to a Super Bowl and win it is just kind of delusional at this point. The Detroit Lions have to make the difficult decision on whether or not they're going to leverage their strength in draft position in this 2023 draft to go get a quarterback that can be the difference maker for them down the road. Again, while you could sit there and say, hey, well, those two first round picks just events invest in the front seven of that defense and you could be looking at a really good unit, you might, you might be looking at a team that would win the division in the NFC North in 2023. And then what? Especially when you look at the NFC now. You've got Jalen Hurts there as kind of the standard bearer now, right? Really. I mean, if you think about it, then what do you've got? And even with Jalen Hurts, you might still have some questions. But you're saying, like, outside of that, like, there's a reason Bears fans and the Bears maybe are hopeful and optimistic about Justin Fields. But that's why they also need to invest heavily on the offense because they need to do everything they can to get the most out of Justin Fields because that, that fucking conference is now wide open with the quarterback position. Dak doesn't scare you. Kirk Cousins doesn't scare you. Danny Dimes sure the hell does. Vanilla Vic's going to scare you. You fucking crazy. The Commanders ain't got a goddamn quarterback. The Packers, who knows? What do you get? Maybe Jordan Lowe? They really going to bring back Rodgers? Rodgers going to inspire any fear anymore? Brady retired. The Panthers ain't got shit. Neither do the Saints or the Falcons. Who knows what the 49ers are going to do at QB? Geno Smith is solid, but he's not a superstar quarterback. Great story in 2022. But realistically, like the Cardinals and Kyler Murray, good goddamn luck. The Rams and Matthew Stafford, maybe if he's healthy, but you know, like how great is he really? What I'm trying to illustrate here is, do you want to be a part of that mix where you've got guys that can play at a certain point, but they can't take you past that point? Or do you want to swing for the fences and try to be the guys that set the standard in the division in the conference going forward? That's the crossroads that the Lions face for themselves this offseason. It really is. That's not hyperbole. You could draft somebody like an Anthony Richardson and even say to yourself, we're not going to play him for one year. And maybe based off of the circumstances and situation, that might be okay. It's usually not something I would advocate, but I could understand it in this case. So as, as easy as it is to talk about the defense, which actually needs to be addressed, and I expect them to try to address, especially that front seven in the offseason, at some point in time, the, the Lions are going to have to have a reckoning when it comes to the quarterback position, whether they really, truly feel Jared Goff is a championship-level quarterback. The quicker they come to that reconciliation, that reckoning, and they make that big quarterback move, the better off they're going to be in the long term. And if they do that, this Lions team could be even more exciting and more of a problem in the years to come.